Hi everyone, it's Sherry Carroll for SimonSaysStamp.com and today I'm showing you a card I created by using some alcohol inks and spray air and this is an older Tim Holtz technique and I thought I'd give it a shot. Okay, so I'm starting off with a panel of the Ranger Glossy Card Stock, and I've chosen some of my alcohol inks that I want to use, and I've chosen a little bit more warmer colors than the brights. Also, I have my can of air, and I could also use a straw if I wanted, but I really like the amount of air that you get out of the canned air. So I'm going to throw down a couple dots of the ink down there, and I'm going to give this a little shot and I can push this around and I'll be moving my paper around as I go but I'm gonna lay down some of my greens first this is uh, lettuce I believe and I have all my supply list on the blog post for Simon Says Stamp so here I'm just using little tiny bursts of air and I'm just getting that to kind of vein out and run a little bit next I'm gonna go in with some salmon type color and you really want to keep in mind the new color that you're gonna create by stacking colors on top of each other so here again, I'm just using a little tiny small burst of air, and I'll go ahead and put some down. I'm really going to try to balance this out, and I'm not doing the entire card. I just kind of want to have, a, I guess, a strip of color running up and down on my card. So here's how this is starting to look. I've added in some aquas and brown, and now I'm going to use the pearl mixative, and this will give me a really nice muted look. And I'm just going to put a couple dots on here and just kind of let them spread out a little bit and then again just shoot it with my air. As it works into those inks it kind of lightens things up and you get a whole nother color and a whole nother layer so it's really kind of fun and it really shows up nicely when you pick it up and look at it in the light. This has got to be the funnest technique I've done with the alcohol inks and I thank Tim Holtz for being so brilliant and thinking of the canned air. So here I'm just adding in some green just a little bit. I want to mute out that salmon a little bit and you can see how all the colors have overlaid and I've created new colors. I'll go ahead and lift this up so you can see and also that pearl mixative gives it such a nice shine. Next I'll be using some of the Tim Holtz rub-ons and I've chosen a couple of these and I'm going to cut up some messages and shapes and go ahead and rub them onto my panel here. I could do some stamping if I used archival ink because that'll go really well on top of the alcohol inks. But for this card I thought it would be fun to kind of mix and match some of my rub-ons. These are really easy to use if you've never used them before and once I've cut up my words I'm able to space them out, line them up exactly how I want them. So I'm going to go ahead and press this down just a little bit with my finger and I'm using a bone folder. You can also use the popsicle stick that comes in the package. Um, I like my bone folder best so I'm just going to go ahead and rub this down and when I'm done I'll peel off that backing. Okay, so I've jumped forward a little bit. I've added a few more words and right now I'm just pressing these butterflies in. I wanted to specifically show you these because there's some really tiny antenna and little tiny words. So I'm going to go over a few times with my bone folder just to make sure that I have them. Next I'll grab that backing sheet and start to lift up and then I'll use my bone folder to make sure that all those little pieces are staying in place and you can see they kind of turn white. So here are my little tiny butterflies and I'm done with my rub-ons and ready to move on to the next step. I'm adding my greeting and I'm using my straight edge ruler to line up my Tim Holtz Industrious stickers and this helps me get a really nice straight greeting when I'm done. And I could color these with the alcohol inks but I thought it was really nice just having the silver lay over the colored full background. Next I'm ready to add some of my embellishments and I'll be using Multimedium as my glue. You can use glossy accents as well but I happen to like the Multimedium better because it leaves a matte finish rather than a really glossy finish. So I'm just going to kind of clean off that little brush that comes in there and just add a little dab of glue to the back of my embellishments and then I can just place those right onto my card. I thought it would be really pretty to add some of the crinkle ribbon to my card. So here I've just squirted it with some water and I'm rolling it up in my hands to get it to wrinkle up. It also helps to get rid of those lines that comes from the cardboard packaging. I'll do this a couple times until I'm really happy and I really like to rub it and get it into a good ball. 
in the center and then I'll just lay it into my dish. I do like to also work in a dish. So I'm going to start coloring this and I'm using some walnut stain. I'm going to mock the brown that's in the card and also some peacock feathers. I want to set this next to the brown because I really love the color that it gives when they sit next to each other. And I'm being very random with this. I'm not really worrying about it. Next I'll add some of the green and that is peeled paint. And for my final color, I want to add in a little bit of red, like in the card. And so here I'm using fired brick. And I'm just hitting some of the areas that don't have any color. And then I can also put this on top of the walnut stain a little bit. And that will give a really nice mix of color. The next thing I'll want to do is to spritz this a little more with some water. I'm going to crinkle that up a little bit. I don't want to do it too much because it'll start to muddy. And once I have that laid out, I can go ahead and start the heating process. I'm grabbing a paper towel because I think eventually I'm going to try to soak up some of that ink. And then I'll be using my heat tool and move that around a little bit. I really like to do this in a glass dish. It keeps my ribbon from floating away as I'm trying to dry it. So I've just flipped it over and I want to make sure that I get this really dry before I put it onto my card so there will be no warping. And keep your heat gun moving. It will dry out really quick and here I'm just going to blot up some of that color with that paper towel and this will help it dry a little bit faster. Here is another look at my finished card. You can see all the layers of color and the rub-ons and also my thanks turned out really nice. This is definitely a technique I'll try again. I hope I've given you some inspiration for your card making and thanks for watching.